the Joe Rogan experience. The U.S. government produces more classified information than non-classified information. <laughs> so even if like there's an audit, they could redact everything. Yeah, and it's just all these different uh, divisions and departments, and they all have their own protocols. So just getting a handle on it is, I mean, that's the first thing that has to get done. We have to, but not not that we're even going to get the real information from there. Right. But um, but then there's also the national security aspect of it. It's like, you know, you have to have some things redacted because you know of China and Russia. Like they could just say that, and then yeah, that is the phrase that gets used. Sure. It's so because they have sad. a full like clamp down on their population. I mean, they they limit the access to the internet. They're they're mm -hmm. in is essentially like China based. Like you, VPNs are illegal. It's like, and they're trying to do that here in America. It's all backwards, yeah, with the restrict act. That is yeah, wild. It's getting, it's getting nasty. Twenty now. years if you use a VPN, which is hilarious. And it's it's managed by the Commerce Department. Unelected bureaucrats yeah. are the ones. See, TikTok's actually not named in that act. Right. They're just letting the Secretary of Commerce decide which apps. Yeah. That's insane. It's insane. So. Um, yeah, it, it, Dan Crenshaw posted about it. Uh, he he uh, he thinks it's not that big a deal because he thinks that you know there's a lot of uh, acts that get pushed and then they never get passed through. But what's disturbing is just the idea, the desire to do this, and the fact that it, uh, imagine if it did get passed. I mean, it's a, just a, a fucking full on assault on free speech. Yeah, I mean, it seems to be getting a toxic stigma connected to it. Did you see Jesse Waters grill L Lindsey Graham about it? No, I didn't. Oh, he didn't read it, but he endorsed it. Oh, Jesus. And it was, and he just got completely called out. It was, it was really funny. It, like, that should be illegal. If you should not even be able to sign right. something that you haven't read. And they can't read it. It's too, it's too long. Right. There's That's not enough time. A, there's not enough time. That's a lot of these acts, right? Oh, and they slip a bunch of shit in there that's like, wait a minute, what about page 485? Like, what the fuck is going on there? And then like, oh, oh I didn't read that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, meanwhile, it's just like it's going it, to change discourse in this country. It's going to change what people have, you know, the, the, the access that people have to free speech and communication. And I mean, I think a lot of people endorsed it righteously being concerned about TikTok. You yeah. know, the, that's what was so sneaky. Is right. you know they they enrage you to then support this disaster. Yeah. Um, and it's just like we we can all agree that there's a problem with TikTok, and that there's you know the Chinese government having access to all of this data is is problematic. But like we there should be an encrypt act like pr encrypt everything. But you can't go around banning apps. It just doesn't work. It's irrelevant. People are going to use. Uh, VPNs. I, I I think this this uh, act needs. I, I don't think it's going to make it. I, well, hope I, I, I hope you're right. Yeah. Because more people are talking about it. Tulsi Gabbard posted a big thing about it. There's a lot of people that are up in arms. But my concern is, if it wasn't for social media, that act, which was kind of ironic, right? If it wasn't for social media and people sharing this and becoming outraged and people discussing this, it would have slipped right through, like the Patriot Act did. Mm. The Patriot Act existed in a time where there wasn't social media, and people weren't really aware of what they were pushing through until it was too late. Yeah, I think there's much better solutions. I mean, b did you watch any of the TikTok CEO getting grilled? Yes, I did. Okay, so, yeah. you know, that was interesting because, you know, he's a pretty, he seemed like a sober guy. Um, but in his point was, well, you have to have consistent standards for other social media companies too. I mean, right. face, like, how do we know that Facebook and Google, just because they're U.S. based, doesn't mean that they're not giving data to China? We have no idea. We have no idea. So that's really the issue. We need to understand what specifically are all of these apps doing. They should be labeled very specifically. Um, you know, and uh, we're starting to see some of that happen. But th the thing is, you can't know with these proprietary apps. Because they're just not sharing anything. I think one of the problems that people have with uh, whether any kind of decentralized um, uh, app like yours or any other de 
decentralized uh, social media network is that people immediately go, oh, what, what do I have to do to do this? Like Mastodon, when people start mm-hmm. using Mastodon right. and you get on it, you're like, what is this? There's so many servers and how do I know what to join and what what's going mm-hmm. on here? Like, Yeah. So, well, Minds is different. Minds is actually not fully decentralized. We're a hybrid. So we run a centralized infrastructure, but we interface through delegation, delegated cryptographic event signing. We, 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 that's happening in the background, but like our app feels like a normal social media app. It's different. Mastodon, the way that that works, is federated instances. So there's all of these different instances with different URLs, and there's like 20 people on each one. And, you know, but there is sort of some interoperability between the instances because the, you, you can subscribe to somebody on another instance from your instance. But it's not fully decentralized. It's federated. And it, the problem is that you don't own your identity. So if, if, if one of those instances goes down, you're screwed. You're, your stuff is, is gone. With, in, in Nostr, which is like an architecturally different setup, and there's other protocols similar to Nostr, but... It doesn't matter if if the website goes down. You just pop over to another one, upload your your key, and all your stuff is there. So, and that's why we like it because it keeps us in check. Because our users could can now basically, if we fuck around, they'll bounce and they can take their stuff. And that's you know, the, because the fo- the social graph specifically is the key. Because you spend a decade built you know getting all these followers like it's right. your life. People spend their lives doing this, and then to be able to just get taken out by YouTube is so devastating and unethical. It's well, ridiculous. it's really creepy, too, because many of the things they took people out for have turned out to be true. Like, there was a lot of things that they were labeling as disinformation or misinformation, which are 100% proven fact now. And people lost their accounts, and there's no recourse. They're not going to reinstate you. And that was a problem also with Twitter that for the longest time, if you said anything that was contrary to whatever the narrative was, what, whether the government was pushing it or the CDC was pushing it, like anything contrary to that narrative, you would get fucked. <laughs> yeah, and, and those, those people, are not, were also... they're not back though. I, will, I think Twitter's making way more progress than everyone else. And I'm, look, I'm ultimately an Elon fan. I'm rooting for him. I think it's vastly improved, but there's chaos currently underway at Twitter. Oh, sure. There, uh, and, and those people have not all been let back on. And I, I don't really understand well, who hasn't why. Been let back the on? people that we don't know. The people who's random Joe Schmo posting a COVID study, like, has he been let back on? All the thousands of people that got banned. Like, well, I think he essentially let back on everyone who didn't do anything illegal. So Not, not Alex. Not Alex. Yeah, that's true. Why? Yeah, well, that's a personal opinion of Elon's, which I don't agree with at all. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because yeah. they let Andrew Tate on. Right. You know, it's like... Yeah, it doesn't mean that he's endorsing Alex to let him back on. Right. It doesn't. I mean, because there's a lot of people that are back on that are, you know... They didn't make that one specific mistake that Alex made, but they've said some But the mistake that... Al- the reason Alex was banned was... Because he confront, it was actually for something he did off Twitter. So he confronted this journalist Oliver Darcy yes. in a line at some event, and he was, you know, being Alex Jones, sort of ranting at him. Yeah. And then Twitter said, "Oh, you're bullying this guy, and this is like not acceptable behavior. So you're, right. so you're going to leave." But then when I remember, you know, the exchange with Elon and whoever it was that was asking asking. It was that he hadn't been let on because of the Sandy Hook stuff. Yeah. Which is not the same. That's not even why he was banned. Right. So, you know, it's yeah. not easy. I, I understand, you know, the politics of it. And he probably has Tim Cook being like, <laughs> you know, we're not going to advertise if you have Alex Jones. But I don't know what's going on. But it doesn't seem to me because he could he could win the argument if he would just let him back on. Right. And, and did you see this crazy clip of... Uh, of Elon and the BBC guy? I did. I posted oh. it today on Oh, you Twitter. did? It was amazing. Amazing. It was amazing. It was amazing, yeah. Because the guy kept trying to change subjects and let's move on. Like, no, 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 no. What, mm-hmm. what the fuck are you talking about? Because that guy thought he could just say the narrative without specific examples. Like, give me an example. 
And the guy had no examples. That's most people who are yes. concerned about this. Well, this is like a lot of people that I know that are famous that like publicly announced they were leaving Twitter. And, you know, one of them I really love. And I was like, why are you doing it? I didn't even say anything to her, but I'm like, why are you doing this? Mm -hmm. This is so dumb. Like, you, you're you just doing this because this is the thing that everyone feels like they're supposed to do. Hey, well, Twitter's kind of fucked now, so bye. No, it was fucked before. It's less fucked now. Yeah, there, are there people that are going to say things like what I showed you earlier today, which is hilarious, and someone posted to Kamala Harris like, oh, after yeah, yeah, she yeah. said something about the assault ban? That shit's important. It's important to have people mock people. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm sorry if it hurts someone's feelings, but that shit's important. Yeah, and I, I, I think the way that Elon handled that was great because obviously you need a specific example to back up an argument. However, yes. I sort of think the whole premise of the conversation is wrong. This idea, th this war that Twitter is at with all the think tanks, and I think it was the Institute for Strategic Discourse that w had actually compiled the information that the BBC guy was talking about. And there is information there. There is data showing, you know, hate speech, X, Y, Z, has, has increased. However, this is the wrong conversation. It's not... The existence or even rise of hate in the, the the presence of that content on an app is not you're not just trying to ban hate. Banning hate does not stop hate. And this is what the peer reviewed research shows. So so trying to bully Elon and Twitter for look, even if there was a bump of hate speech since it became a little bit more free. I mean, it seems like that's a, a potentially understandable intermediary effect to happen while things reorient. Mm -hmm. Like we open up free speech. We're open up the valve a little bit. OK, because we think that this is going to be healthy for society long term. So let it bump a little bit. We need that. We need to see what we hate or what other people hate. You need to like what is it? Um, Free speech let us lets us know who the idiots are. Like you, you mm -hmm. need to identify them. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The the best response to whatever it is, bad speech is better speech, is better arguments, and that's you. You literally have a debate platform, which is what Twitter essentially is. Yeah, that is yeah. the purpose. Yeah, it's the purpose. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and not to mention that the hate isn't defined, so it's only one type of hate that these people are typically referring to right wing hate right wing hate yeah not, not left, left wing right hate. that's yeah. that's okay and so actually so um we're at, we're suing california we just filed this law because the um this uh complaint they are trying to pass this social media law called ab 587 which requires it's a censorship law they're they're they require these policies on disinformation misinformation hate speech and then they use the Undefined, use the words extremism and radicalization. There's no definitions. They don't require you to have a, a, a child exploitation material policy, but they do require you to have a policy on hate, which isn't defined. Right. And so we're suing them with, um, with the Babylon Bee and, and Tim Pool. When did they start this? Uh, when, when did they start trying to pass this? It just went into effect in January. So it's now? It's now. It's in. So if you live in California, what's the repercussions? So it is, it's, it's targeted at social media companies. Okay. So basically mandating that social media companies um, have the, submit these policies. So we would have to, we would, they would force us to write a policy on hate speech and submit it to them. And then additionally, we, we would have to, on like a biannual basis, submit analytics about all of our moderation data. Which, honestly, we're already transparent about our moderation data, so that's, that's largely public anyway. We have a jury system, um, and, and we have in-house moderators. But the, the, it's, it's just it's a huge burden. Like, it's crazy that they would expect companies to submit all that and then have ar these arbitrarily, well, actually not arbitrarily, specifically chosen categories for policies that are clearly politically charged. And Newsom, like, when he came out and announced this law, it was very, you know, we have to stop hate on social media and misinformation and disinformation. Protect society. Protect democracy. No, you know, you're not protecting democracy by stopping free speech. That right, is, because there's no, there's no checks and balances in place if something turns out to be accurate. 